when I started working in metal, transitioning from using, you know, virgin materials and, you know, buying big lengths of steel in and bits and pieces. It wasn't overly sitting well with me. I drove past Arataki Honey and saw the bright blue metal drums and I drove in and then drove out with three of them in the back of my car. You know, we came across this waste material ultimately and it just lends itself to so many different things. We love the material from the point of view of the colour palettes because you never know quite what you're going to get and that informs what we're making. The nature that they've just been battered a bit, they've had these really long journeys, they're industrial. We have been able to transform them into something that extended their life, uh, are joyful, they're bold, they're colourful, they're playful. Because when you say it's a 44 gallon drum, when they see a flower, they're just like, whoa, really? You know? The kind of current aesthetic we've got really yeah. are, the, are the blooms, and that's come from Katie. That's Katie's love. She loves her botanics, yeah. she loves her flowers, and this is kind of evolving. It's evolved a lot from some very kind of stylized, kind of almost basic to this kind of evolution to these quite ornate as we've kind of learned what the material can do. So then after we've cut them out, they fall into the drum. We collect them, they're usually still quite hot and then we store them there ready to use in our, in our artworks. This is our little sweet shop. So we make corsages, so we, we, we make the components. These are, these are cut to a pattern, a template, and then we weld those. Whilst it's still warm, obviously the metal is quite malleable and soft. So yeah, we just play with positioning. Part of its appeal to people is that it, it's got the scratches, you know, it's got bits of rust, it's got bits of branding. So this is a New Zealand honey drum. So you've got this little black bit that comes off the branding. So that means that no two pieces are the same. They're all completely unique. All of this that we have here, a collaboration between Amy and I came about, not, not due to COVID, but it enabled us to have during lockdown some personal creation time. So Amy, she wasn't able to come to the workshop, so she was working with cardboard at home on the kitchen table, just as we did when we were kids. And I was in the midst of a 100-day project, so I was doing a lot of drawing, quite sort of illustrative, stylized. And so after lockdown, there was a window of opportunity at the end of 2020 where there's an exhibition, a sculptural exhibition locally here in Bridge Park. Amy, a few weeks before, said, oh, why don't we combine our two projects? And so we ended up making about 120 of our garden sculptures. They sold out, so we, we thought, oh, we're onto something. That love for creating and making was just, just absolutely supported and encouraged from a young age. Having a common interest, Katie and I had making and crafting and sticking and gluing and our dining table was always covered in some project that we were doing or some market yeah. we might be preparing for. Yeah, because we did, we did do little businesses. We did do little sort of businesses, <laughs> we did. We found this very common place at the, at the table making that was just fulfilled us massively and also encouraged our development of our Creative. skills. Yeah, yeah, and our, our, our careers going forwards. And here we are, a few decades on. Um, <laughs> but we were also rediscovering each other as well as, as professionals, as creatives, as sisters, as adults. Even those all things are just constantly kind of evolving and changing. As a fledgling business, in our second year, we're now being able to say, okay, so what do we stand for? And one of them is conscious, you know, conscious creation. So we take the drums, what could we use this component or element of the drum for? What does this particular surface enable us to, to do? If it's flat, or oh, we can do some laser cutting on it. If it's more ridged, it might be that it adds more texture and depth to our artwork. As we've gone with the drums, we can use the rims and the bases. We use as much of the drums as we can. And, and the earrings came from that too. So we were playing in the workshop with these little dots that we had cut from these drums and, and a sort of light bulb moment of going, well, actually, you know, we, we would enjoy wearing these. And so I'm sure there are others that would too. So we stuck a couple of backings on and, and wore them ourselves just to, yeah. just to, to trial. And then it felt like everybody was going, where did you get those from? Did you make those? Where did you get? 
Equally, we then look at it from a colour perspective. So both from our design backgrounds, colour has been really important, whether that is from designing the products and, and items that we've done with previous companies, but also, you know, how we put our house together and what we wear, you know, wearing black and but bright coloured earrings. It's all about enjoying working together whilst we do it. I mean, that is always a key thing. The joyfulness, and that joyfulness can come simply from the colour. It can come from the form. It can come from how it makes you feel about it. And, and that's, I mean, artworks always provoke an emotion in everybody, you know. We have a lot of fun, and the material allows us to really kind of bring that to other people as well. My husband and I moved up from Wellington, and the house we purchased had this bright red Pyro Classic. Red is not my favourite colour, but I came to love this fire because it was a large house and it heated the whole thing. It had a heat transfer system and so it just literally took all that warmth and it put it into the four bedrooms that we had and I just loved it. So we were there for a couple of years and then we moved into our current house and it was the first thing that we purchased. Even though it had a fireplace, a compliant fireplace already, and I was like, no. Nah. We tried it for a couple of weeks and it literally heated about a metre sort of radius from the fire. No, 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 we're not doing this. So we went over to Fourth Element and we purchased exactly the same design and setup, but this time, because my favourite colour is blue, it had to be Dulux Blues. And having a dry house here in the Hawke's Bay is so important. The simplicity of putting that in and how it changes the way you can use your home, yeah. you know. It was a no-brainer for us having had such a warm home in our previous house. The effect that that had on how you live your life in the house was so profound that for us both, Darren and I were both, nope, it's a no-brainer, we'll, we'll, we'll go and get another one, put that one in, and then obviously I had full autonomy over colour choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was not leaving that to Darren, I was not leaving that to him. You know, my previous role has been a colour specialist, so to be able to go into the dealership, into the showroom and actually choose colour that I wanted it to be and then decorate this particular room, you know, the ceiling is the same colour and, and actually I love the colour so much that our dining room table legs became the same colour. Part of our values and our philosophies is in a shared space. Some of it isn't, but part of it is. Yeah, yeah. Colour certainly is. Yeah. And being conscious around what we make and why we make it, you know, that's another shared one. Just reading your posts around, oh gosh, that many trees. My goodness, you know, and I was thinking about the Marai Tocha Trust and, you know, all these other initiatives that are about, you know, adding to our current environment in positive ways. I was like, everybody's doing little actions that can make a bigger difference overall. So I was like, oh, I've been educated. <laughs> <laughs> it's teaching, isn't it? it, it ultimately, it it's teaching. It yeah, is, and it's, it's, showing, it's showing different ways of doing, you know, of caring for the environment, different ways of doing things. And, it's, and, it, and it can touch your life in, in all aspects. It's not just about putting your milk bottles out at the end of the driveway or, you know, there's lots of different aspects.